trouble sleeping. Yes, this is a very, very big issue for a lot of people and um, a lot of important functions actually happen during sleep. So we want to make sure that you have very good nights rest of sleep. Not being able to sleep can really put a damper on any healing process. And uh, there are two different types of trouble sleeping. It's trouble going to sleep or trouble staying asleep. And so we're gonna go through some of the common reasons for trouble going to sleep. Dr. Jeremy? So the first reason is that you might have a elevated cortisol level at night. And so cortisol is your body's main anti-stress hormone. And with higher levels of cortisol, then your melatonin, which is your sleep hormone, can be negatively affected. So then this might make it difficult for you to fall asleep. And you know, you can find out if you have uh, elevated cortisol at night by doing some saliva lab testing to see how your cortisol curve is and to see if it is elevated at night. And so what's the second reason, Dr. Lam, about whether, um, why people have trouble going to sleep? So um, people might have excess adrenaline or epinephrine and norepinephrine. So we talked about this in length already that epinephrine and norepinephrine are your fight or flight hormones. And so when you have a lot of this going on, it's, you can imagine how hard it is to really calm down to go to sleep uh, well. So these two neurotransmitters are major players in our neuroaffect circuit of the neuroendometabolic stress response. So this being wired during the day and tired but unable to fall asleep is classic. Uh, of adrenal fatigue when the sympathetic system is tied in on one hand, as we talked about earlier, to adrenaline, but at the same time, it flows into the sleep cycle. So it basically affects both circuits, you know, uh, and it's very troublesome. And not only that, even, you know, when you get so tired, eventually you will fall asleep, but you'll never sleep well because two, three hours later, you will wake up. Why would that be so? So sometimes when you wake up in the middle of the night, it could be due to an imbalanced type of blood sugar. Blood sugar imbalance is a common symptom that we see in adrenal fatigue. This usually affects people even during the daytime where they feel like they have to snack every two to three hours. They get really hangry if they don't eat or they feel their blood sugar kind of going low and they feel unwell. Um, but not saying that their blood sugar actually is low. It's just that feeling of sh um, shakiness when they don't eat. And this could be due to whether it's a congested liver or a lowered function of the pancreas or some of the insulin production or receptor issues um, or dietary choices. If you eat a lot of carbs or processed carbs and refined sugars, it could really spike your insulin really quickly and make you uh, hungry faster. So there could be a lot of reasons why your sugar is imbalanced. Yeah, and, and we have to be very careful because we don't want to uh, jump to the conclusion that you have a diabetes or hypoglycemia because if you actually measure uh, the blood sugar itself during these feeling period, they are actually normal. So the, the body is reacting somewhat uh, hypersensitively uh, even to normal ranges of blood sugar. And uh, you know, this is very uh, troublesome for many people. They just don't feel good, you see what I'm saying, uh, even though labs are normal. Okay. Right. And so here are some tips that are going to help you to try to sleep better. So to deal with the elevated cortisol, uh, some supplements such as magnesium, uh, taking GABA or phosphorylated serine might actually help uh, with the elevated cortisol and might help you with uh, your sleep. And if you have an elevated adrenaline epinephrine response, doing the breathe adrenal breathing to bring to bring down that sympathetic response, trying some other types of sleep aids and adrenal yoga to reset that mind body um, could be helpful for helping you go to sleep. Yeah, and but one of the things I had to caution uh, doc, uh, what Dr. Jeremy mentioned is that you know a, a lot of these compounds, even like uh, phosphorylated serine, magnesium, theanine, GABA. You know, they work only a certain percent of the time. And if your body is already very weak and it's fragile and very nervous, actually they can behave paradoxically. So we see a lot of people come to us are overuse of these compounds. They just read on the internet, they buy themselves or the practitioner with their best intentions, uh, try to do that, and then actually they get worse. So, you know, I'm not saying these things are not good, 
I think you have to understand that without proper individualization, what supposed to work actually can make you worse. So just be aware, especially if you're in the advanced stages, okay? And so to also uh, help with the imbalanced blood sugar, uh, taking snacks in the evening is helpful. Uh, we like recommending nuts or almond milk because it kind of stays in your uh, digestive system longer and gives you good nutrients throughout uh, the day and throughout the evening. Uh, intaking a lot of protein is also good for energy source. And then uh, imbalanced blood sugar can be dealt with uh, chromium and berberine as well. But again, these supplementations need to be uh, taken with caution and an individualized approach.